10 years ago, Google announced something revolutionary in the smart TV category. This was a product called Google TV. When it came out, me and my brother rushed over to Best Buy to see what it was all about. Google TV combined Chrome as well as different Google services all into a set top box or built into your TV. And it came with this awesome remote, hopefully removing all other remotes from your home. Well, three years later, Google came out with another new product called the Google Chromecast. Google Chromecast was so revolutionary because it was super affordable and it was able to be plugged into an existing TV and instantly give you smart TV functionality. You could instantly play a YouTube video or a Netflix movie right to your TV just with internet and your phone, which was amazing. Now, over the years, we've seen a few different types of Chromecast. They've added 4K and done a lot of things, but it still is a simplified smart TV that only lets you use your phone as the remote to play movies onto the TV. Well, one year later, Google came out with another product called the Nexus Player. Built into the Nexus Player was a brand new operating system called Android TV. This took many different parts of the Android operating system and incorporated them into a lean back experience so you could use this remote very easily to access your favorite applications and you would have access to other Google services as well. So 10 years after the introduction of Google TV, Google Chromecast, Android TV, Google has finally made something that incorporates all of these different devices into one. This is Chromecast with Google TV. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So this video is 10 years in the making and Google has come out with a brand new product, which takes the original Google TV name that started 10 years ago. They've taken the Chromecast functionality that most people know about, and they've taken the Android TV software that they have been building for a few years now and incorporated them all into this one device called Chromecast with Google TV. So this isn't just another Chromecast, this has so much more that it can do. So in today's video, we're going to be testing out everything that you can do with this device. So here on the box, you can see that it works with YouTube, YouTube TV, Netflix, Prime Video, Spotify, Disney Plus, Hulu, ESPN, Sling TV, HBO Max, CBS All Access, and Stars, and much, much more. And here it says over 700,000 plus movies and TV episodes. And right down here in the bottom corner, you will see that this is a 4K supported device. So your TV doesn't have to have 4K, but if it does, the picture quality is just going to be much better. Now over here on the side, you can see the new Google TV logo. It says Google TV puts all your entertainment into one place so it's easy to find. And you can easily search with Google Assistant to find different movies to watch and receive recommendations. Here it is HD, 4K and HDR compatible. And then down here it has Bluetooth, it works with Wi-Fi, and it works with Android and iOS devices. So here on the back, this is how we set it up. You plug it in, connect, and you are ready to stream. And then over on this side, it talks about Google Assistant, how you can interact with the device. So let's go ahead and get this unboxed. So right inside here, we have two boxes. We have the new Chromecast right here. So let's start with that. Now this does come in three different colors. So there is the Chromecast. Here you have an HDMI port where you will plug that into your TV. Down here you have a USB-C port that you will power with this. And then there you have a reset button and a power light on the back with a nice G on the front. So this is the snow version. It also comes in sunrise as well as sky. So next let's take a look at the new remote. So here on the remote, you have a controller right here with a select button in the middle, back, Google Assistant, home, mute button, YouTube button, Netflix, here you have power controls, an input button right here, you have a microphone, and then on the side you have volume control. So you can easily adjust the volume while you are holding the remote. I really like how that looks. Next we have some instructions, a let's get started guide, and some more warranty information. So here all we need to do is plug this into our TV and power it up. Then we need to switch to the TV input that the Chromecast is on, put in the batteries, and then we're gonna go into the Google Home application to get it fully set up. And then here you can ask Google Assistant, what can you do to learn more? And then here on the bottom, we do have our USB-C power cable. It would be nice if it was a little bit longer. 
And then lastly here in the box, we have some matching batteries for our remote. Let's go ahead and put those in now. Those are the prettiest batteries I've ever seen. So let's go ahead and get this plugged in. So now we're going to get to the back of our TV and find an open HDMI port. We're gonna plug in the new Chromecast, and then we're going to plug in the power cable and plug the other end into the wall. Ah, just fits. If you don't see the Chromecast, you do need to switch the input on your TV. So once we plug it in, it boots up, and the first thing it asks is to pair the remote. And you're gonna do this by holding down the home button and the back button to pair. And here you can see on the bottom, our light is no longer pulsing, and there it has been paired. So now we're going to use the remote and choose our language. And so now we're going to finish the setup on our mobile phone with the Google Home application. So you can just download this from the Play Store or the App Store. Now you can go through the setup without using your phone just by selecting down, but it's gonna take you a little bit longer. So here on my phone, I'm just going to head into the Google Home application. And then right here at the top, you have the option to set up Chromecast. If you don't see that, you could select the plus, you can select setup device, and then here at the top, you have set up new device in your home. And here we're going to choose what home we're gonna add this to. And now it is looking for a new device. So it found our new Chromecast, and now we're gonna use our phone to scan the code on the screen. All right, it is now connected. Here it is linking with my Google account, and it's asking us to read through the privacy policy statement. And when you've done that, we're going to accept. And now we're going to agree to additional legal terms. Next, we're going to choose where we want this device. So I'm in the office right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and choose office. If you want to put this into a new room, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you do have add a custom room. So we're just going to select office. And then next. And now we're gonna choose the Wi-Fi network that this will connect to. Now it does have five gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. So I would choose the five gigahertz if you have that available. And then we're gonna type in our password. And now it is connecting our Chromecast to the wireless network so that when your phone is gone, it always has a connection to the internet. Next, we're going to sign in with our Google account on the Google TV so that it gives us a personalized TV experience. So now I'm going to verify my identity. And now we need to sign in with our Google account. Now that we've signed in, it is downloading an update on the TV, but then over here on the phone, it's going to run us through a few different options to getting the Chromecast set up. Here, we can have it use our location. That's really helpful for finding out information locally. Here, we have the option to help improve Chromecast. Here, it's showing that we are having recommendations that are turned on, and Google Assistant is going to be active. So we're going to select Accept. And now it's talking to us about the Google Assistant. So all we'll need to do is press the Google Assistant button and then we can ask it for a movie to watch or uh, change our lights or play music or whatever we want all right with this remote and it will do that on the TV. So once you're ready, we can select continue. Now one of the cool things about this new Chromecast with Google TV is it will search across all the different applications on your Chromecast. So instead of having to go into each different one, it will automatically pull up all of them and show you on the main screen. So you have TV shows, movies, and music. So if you want it to do that, make sure you select allow. Next, we're going to activate voice match. So this will allow your Google Assistant to know it's you versus other people that live in your home. Then we're going to agree. If Google Assistant doesn't know your voice, it will ask you to repeat some phrases, but mine has already done that. Now it's asking if we want personalized results. I do, it's gonna make it the best experience possible. So now we are going to choose our TV services that we currently use. So if you want to select one, you would tap on it and you can link your account there. If I didn't want it to add something, I can tap here and then it will uncheck that option. But you can go through and then check all of the different TV services that you use. Once you have the account selected, select more, and now you have the option to personalize the ambient mode on your Chromecast. So ambient mode is what shows up when you aren't watching anything. It will automatically go to this after a few minutes. So it's going to display the time, weather, and personalized photos if you have selected your Google Photos library, or you can just come down here and choose art gallery instead of the Google Photos. So let's just do art gallery for now. And then you have a few different options of art gallery here. I like to choose um, the 
landscape one and the featured photos. So there's a few different options there with fine art, earth and space, street art, and then here you have a new captured on pixel category. So we're gonna select next. And now we are all done. So we've set up the device in the Office TV, we've added our services and adjusted our ambient mode. So now we need to head back to the TV to complete the setup. Now we're going to set up controlling our volume with the Chromecast remote. So we're going to select setup now. And now we're gonna choose how we can control our volume. So with our TV, with a sound bar or with an AV receiver. Here I just have the TV. So here it's asking what brand of TV I have. We have options from Samsung, LG, Sony, Hisense, um, and a ton of others. So this is a Samsung TV. So I'm just going to select Samsung. And now it says you will hear music. If you can't hear it, make sure you turn up the volume. So next. And so now we're testing the volume buttons and you can see that when I push it, instantly it changes the volume over there. And that's because it does have an IR blaster right here on the front of the remote. Does the volume work? Yes. So that's really neat that it has that functionality. So next we're going to set up the power button. So here it says the power button at the bottom. When you press it, it should power on the device. Wait eight seconds, press it again to turn it on. So pressed it once, the TV turned off. Press it another time. And there the TV turns back on. So yes, the power button worked. And now our Chromecast remote is set up. Now it's going to go through and install applications. Since we selected to have Netflix and Sling and those other options, it's downloading those in the background. Here it's adding some final touches and our Chromecast is ready. So let's start exploring. So here is the new Chromecast with Google TV interface. Previously with a Chromecast, it just showed pictures, time and weather. Now it's going to display all of these different applications that you can use and navigate to with the remote. So up at the top first, we have search. So if we press on here, it's going to give us some recommendations on things that we could use with voice search. And then here it could also help us find something to watch. And then at the top, it says, if we hold down the Google Assistant button, we can then talk. What's the weather like tomorrow? In Orem tomorrow, it'll be sunny with a high of 77 and a low of 48. Great, pretty simple. So with the voice search, not only can you find things to watch, but you can also control anything that you would do with the Google Assistant. Let's try out some smart home commands. Turn off the office lights. Edit. Turning off 10 lights. Turn on the office lights. All right. Turning on 10 lights. Show me the front door. All right. Streaming front door on office TV. Now here you can see it is showing my Nest Hello camera. You'll notice there is a Nest application on this. That will not work if you have migrated your account, but you can view your cameras with the Google Assistant. Now if your TV is off and you want to adjust some commands, you are able to do that with the Google Assistant button. Turn off the family room lights. Turn on the family room lights. So let's go back, that is search. Next we have for you. So it's automatically going to learn about your different watch habits and give you different movies to watch based on that. So here it's showing abominable. My kids love this. Above that it's showing it has an 81% Rotten Tomato score. It's PG comedy 2019 and how long. So I really like how simple it is on what it's telling you. And so we can go through and find different things to watch. Next we have your app. So these are applications that I currently have downloaded to the TV. Now, if I want to adjust this, I can just hold down the button and then I have the option to move or open. So let's say I don't wanna watch Netflix as much. I can then move it back further. I press to confirm and now it's asking if I wanna move more. So if I wanted to move Prime Video or something over, I press to confirm and then I press back to exit the edit mode. So now let's say we want to go into Netflix and use Netflix. Now, once you open it up, just like any other smart TV, it's then going to ask you to sign in. So here we have the typical Netflix menu and we have the option to sign in. Now, sometimes it can be pretty cumbersome to use the remote to type things in on the TV. So what you can do is actually download the Android TV remote application from the Google Play Store or the App Store. And here it's searching through, here it found a Chromecast on our Wi-Fi network. 
I'm just going to tap Chromecast. So here it's giving me a code to type in. I can pair. So now I have my remote over here on my phone. So you can do different things, go home, play, pause, navigate through, but right here you have a keyboard. So I can tap on the keyboard and then I can type in my email address. Now that didn't work very good, but I just did want to mention that this app is available. The keyboard is kind of a little iffy, but it's nice that it gives you a second remote in your home. You even have the option to use Google Assistant right up there. So it's kind of cool that anytime you can have a remote from your phone. So let's just sign in with the remote. So you just navigate around, press the button, and you can then sign in this way. All right, we are signed in and now I can use Netflix just like I would on any other device. And then I can push home to go back to the home screen. So moving down, you have movies trending currently on Google. Here you have your watch list that you'll be able to control from the new Google TV application on Android or the Play Movies application on iOS. So you can adjust that there. And then here it's recommending other movies. So then when you're browsing around looking for something to watch, maybe you see something you want to watch, but you don't want to watch it right now. All you need to do is hold down on that movie. Here it gives you an option to play. You can watch the trailer. You have add to watch list, so I could add it to watch later. You have the option to select, like, dislike, or you can view more details about it and it will take you to this main page. So just by clicking on it, it's going to take you to this page but it's nice that you can just hold down and quickly get to it and add it to your watch list without having to come in here. So if we go back up to the top, here we have movies. So we can see some other recommendations that it's going to give us, new movies, again, recommended from your watch list and some other options. Here we have shows, so TV shows, maybe you wanna catch up on Bob's Burgers or you wanna go through and watch other trending TV shows that is all available right here. Now, um, it's not really saying where these are coming from. So let's say I wanted to watch New Girl. If I open this up down here, it's showing that it's available on Netflix and I can watch now. There's seven seasons here. I could easily add the show to watch list. And then there's two different ways to watch. So I could click on that and I could buy the episodes from Google TV or I could watch from Netflix. Now I've actually already watched all these, so I'm gonna select that I have watched it and then would know to recommend certain types of shows like this and maybe not recommend me to watch because I've already watched it. And then down you can see more about the cast, you can see other recommended titles and so on. So let's go back, let's go up here to the top. Next we have apps. So this is going to show you applications that you have downloaded onto your device and then it's going to show you other recommended applications. So here is the Your Apps row that we saw on the other page. Here you have other categories. So maybe you wanted to search for an application. So let's say I want to search for a music and video application. So here it opened that category and now I can go through and find different apps that I may want to download. So as you browse through here, you can see that there are all kinds of different applications. So let's go ahead and download PBS Kids video. I let my kids watch this. So all I need to do is select install and then it is going to download that and it will show up on the apps row. Now, if you download an app you don't want anymore, you can just come over here and uninstall it. Now there is one application that I want to find, but I don't know what category it's in. So to find an app, all I need to do is search for it. Download Google Duo. Here's Google Duo, high quality video calls on the Google Play Store. So there it found exactly what I want to download. It's now available on the Android TV platform. So here I'm going to install it on my Chromecast. And then if we go back to the Your Apps row and go all the way to the end, here you'll see all apps. So these are all the apps that you currently have installed on the Google TV. Now there is one application that's missing from this menu that you would usually see on an Android TV device, which is the Google Play Store. So I'm not able to find it anywhere, but if you use Google Assistant, you can then open it up. Open Play Store. Opening, Google Play Store. So then within the Play Store, you can see the full list of applications that are available. And then if we come up here to the top, you can see apps, games, 
and then my apps. So under this section, this is where you can actually update any applications that are on the device. So right now there are no updates available, but it's just nice that you can see them here. Here you have the search button. And then here in the settings, you do have some parental controls. So you can come in here and adjust what types of applications you can download to this device. And once you do add a parental control, it does add a pin code so that you can't download applications unless you know that pin code. And then here you have some other options where you can have um, apps automatically update and so on. So that is the apps section. And then last, you have your library. So these are movies that you have purchased and owned. We just watched this last week, so it's showing that I recently purchased it. Here it's showing movies that I have in my watch list. And then here it's showing other movies that I own. And these are movies that come from Movies Anywhere that I have linked to my Google account. So um, it's all showing here in one application. And then it's showing different shows that I have purchased down here at the bottom. And then last over here on the side, we have me. So if you select your profile and then go down to account settings, here you can actually adjust a few more things. So here you can actually turn on settings lock where it won't let anyone adjust the settings. Here you can manage different services that are linked to your account. So I've linked Netflix and Sling TV, but you can also link or unlink these other services that are currently available. Here you have the option to adjust payment authentication. So this is really nice. Uh, I don't want my kids to rent or buy movies. So here I can make it so that I do need a pin code to buy a movie. Here I do need a password and then never. So maybe you don't have kids around and you don't need to worry about that. You can select that right there. Next we have Google Assistant. So here you can turn on a safe search filter. You can block offensive words. You can choose what apps are searchable. Right now Netflix is the only option and you can allow for personal results. And then here you have one last option called apps only mode. So I would say this option is more for some type of parental controls that you could add to this device. Cause when you enable this, it turns off Google assistant, it turns off all of the applications and it makes the device pretty limited on what it can do. So now that I have it turned on, let's go back to the home page and you can see that all of those different categories at the top are gone. Down here, it is only showing apps that are currently installed on the device. So I can only use those apps. And then if I click see all, here I could access all these, but if I try and activate the Google Assistant, here you can see that it says I am not currently available in this profile. So if you want to have a limited profile, you are able to do that, but I'm gonna head back in here into account settings and then I'm going to turn off apps only mode. You can also get to this personalized menu just by holding down the home button on the remote. It will jump right there. And here I could go into the settings, but right here I do have ambient mode. So if you want to quickly turn that on, you just press that and now it is in ambient mode where it's going to show you the pictures. Here you can see it shows the time. It shows what device this is. So this is called the Office TV. It's showing what network you're connected to. And down here in the corner, it's showing where this picture come from. Now, if you have your own Google Photos linked, it will now show you the date and location you took those photos. I'll show you how to turn that off in a bit and how to customize the ambient mode. And then down here, we have options for notifications, which there are currently none. Now let's head into the settings. The first option is to adjust your Wi-Fi. The second option is to add a secondary account. So my wife added her account to the Chromecast here. And with this feature, all it really does is give you the option to sign into certain applications with each account. So now she can sign into her YouTube account on the YouTube app, but that's pretty much it. There isn't like a profile switching or anything that I thought might be there. Um, hopefully we see that in the future, but right now, whoever signs in first, they're going to be the main person on the account and all the homepage is going to be recommended on what that user watches. Next, you have privacy controls, and then we have display and sound. So here it has HDMI CEC. So this allows for certain things to link together with certain types of TVs. Here we have match content. So this is going to match the dynamic range of videos. That's nice, you wanna turn that on. Here we have display settings. So you have a game mode option. One thing I wanna mention right now, since it's here, is Google Stadia currently is not supported on this, but Google has announced that next year it will be able to use Google Stadia. So until now, the only Chromecast that supports that 
is the Chromecast Ultra. And then here you can choose the resolution that you want and it should automatically detect that. Next we have system sounds. So right now the TV is clicking whenever I press the button. We're just gonna keep that on right now. And now you have a format selection for audio. So you have automatic, um, it's going to use supported formats. You have never used surround sound, you have manual. So choose formats manually from available formats. So if you choose manual, then you can come down here and adjust Dolby Digital, Dolby Atmos in Dolby Digital Plus, AAC, or Dolby Digital Plus. So we're just gonna go ahead keep it on automatic. Next we have apps. So this is showing the apps that you currently have installed. You could come in here and uninstall applications if you are having issues. Here we have system settings. Under accessibility, we have the option to adjust the captions. We can adjust high contrast, text to speech, accessibility shortcuts, the talkback feature, and the switch access. Um, let me know if you want a full video about these features in the comments below. About, you can come in here and double check uh, any software updates. And down here, you can see the software you're currently on. So this is running Android TV OS version 10. And then we can go down here, adjust date and time. We have language, so here you can see all the different languages that are supported. Here we have keyboard layout. We have storage. There is only 4.4 gigabytes of internal storage. Next, we have ambient mode. So here we could start it now. We can change it to Google Photos if we want. So let's say I want to adjust to Google Photos and it's saying go into the Google Home application to adjust that. And then here we can choose if it's gonna show the weather, hide the weather, or Fahrenheit or Celsius. Here we can show or hide the name or the Wi-Fi network. We can show the personal photo data. Here we have the option to show two portrait photos together, or we can hide them. Here we can change the personal photo curation from all albums to live albums only. And then here we can adjust the slideshow speed. So that's how often it's going to update the picture. If you want five seconds, 30 seconds, um, a minute, or up to 10 minutes. So it's really nice that you have all of those ambient mode options right here on the TV. Next, you have energy saver mode. So you do have the option to turn off the TV after a certain amount of time. So it would display the photos for like 30 minutes and then it would turn off. You can choose never, you can choose 24 hours. So there's a lot of options there. Next, you have the option for casting. So let others cast to this device. So this is pretty important if you have other people in your home that have an Android. So if you want them to know that you are casting something, here you can select always so that they know you're casting. You could select only while casting or you could choose never so they wouldn't receive those casting notifications. And then down here at the bottom, you have the option to restart. So that's just going to reboot the device so that if there's any issues, it would just boot right back up. So that was the system settings. So now we have remotes and accessories. So currently the Chromecast remote is paired, but this does support Bluetooth. So you could pair other remotes or other accessories. So now let's pair my MOGA game controller here. So all I'm gonna do is pair remote or accessory. I'm going to turn on the device and put it into pairing mode. And there it found the controller. Going to select. All right, and now it is paired. So while it is paired, we could use it to navigate or we can now play games right on our new Chromecast. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I push B, it will go back. And let's go ahead and find a game. Crossy Road seems to be a favorite to test out. So let's go ahead and install that. And here it is asking for us to input our age. And there's no way to do that. It won't let me select anything. So some applications currently have not been totally formatted for the new Google TV. And so that is how you can game on Chromecast. So the other buttons you have on here are mute. So when I press mute, it mutes just like it would with the regular TV remote. Here I have a YouTube app option, so I can just jump into YouTube. Next I have a Netflix app option, so then I can just jump right to Netflix. There we already tested the power button to turn on and off the TV. Next the little black dot is the microphone, 
And then last we have the source button. So when you press this, it will change the source on the TV so you could head back to your cable box or head to your gaming console. Now that I've shown you how you can navigate the new Chromecast with your remote, let me show you how you can still use it as a Chromecast device. So here on my phone, I have a folder with all the different apps that I usually cast from. So let's choose Disney Plus. Now I want to choose the Chromecast I wanna to connect to. So here I'm going to select the cast icon and here I have Office TV. So when I select Office TV, here you can see over on the TV, it's loading up Disney Plus to begin to start play something. So now I just need to find something from my phone to watch. Let's watch this. I can select resume. And then here over on my TV, it's going to pick up where I left off and it's going to keep playing. Now, if I leave the house with my phone and my kids wanna keep watching, it will still work because the Chromecast is connected to your home Wi-Fi network. It will continue to download the information. And then if they wanna control it, they can now pick up the remote and they can easily pause and play and skip and nav navigate around all with this. So it's really nice that it's all connected together with this new device. They don't have to have a phone to control it. They can just pick up the remote and they continue on in controlling it. So all the different cast supported apps will still work. So if you use Netflix or movies or Plex or YouTube TV or whatever. Now, one other place to see what is playing on your Chromecast is in the Google Home application. So when we head into this app, here you can see there's a lot going on, but right here under media, this button is going to show you what is playing locally on your Wi-Fi network on any Chromecast supported device. So right here, you can see that we are watching Maleficent on Disney+. Plus. Now I can select play and it's going to keep playing that in the background or I can pause, I can skip through all right there. And down here, I do have volume controls, but I'm getting a notice that you do need to use the TV volume to be able to control the volume on this Chromecast. So here I would need to use this volume. Like casting, you also have the option to mirror your Android phone to the screen. So this won't work if you have an iPhone or an iPad, but an Android device will. So on my Samsung phone, I'm just going to swipe down the notification panel twice. And then I'm going to look for the option that says smart view. So this option right here, when I tap on it, you'll see devices you're able to cast your phone to. Here you can see the Office TV. Tap Share Now. So here you can see my full screen. As I navigate around, you'll see exactly what I am doing. Let's say I open up an application. I wanna show off a picture. I can click on there. Here I can rotate my phone and then I can zoom in. See the quality is pretty good there. And so then I can play movies and do everything right from here. Now, if you do want to mirror your desktop computer, you can do that as well. I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one. And when you're done, you can just go to the notification tray right here, pull down and select disconnect. So now let's go back and here let's go under the office. And here we have our office TV. So under here, we have the same options where we can play and pause the video. So here again, we have the volume controls. If you do wanna control the volume from here, there will be a setting that we need to adjust on the TV. And then here we have the options to stop casting or we can open Disney Plus. But I wanna go in and see more settings of the new Chromecast. So here we have device info. So there we have the name, we could change the name, we can change the home it's in, the room it's in. So next we have groups. Now this is audio group. So if I wanna play music on all of my devices at once, I am able to do it with this group option. It does not allow you to play video on the Chromecast and then play the audio out of other Google Home speakers. That feature right now is not supported. So if I go back to the main menu and select the plus, here I have speaker groups. So I can create a group and here I can add all the devices in the office. So I have Office Display, Lenovo Smart Display, I have the Nest Hub and I have the Max. So here I have all the speakers that I can create in a group. And so we're gonna add those four. Next, we're gonna name this office group. And it, now it has been created. So now I can say, play my new jams playlist on the office group. All right, here's the new jam station from YouTube Music, playing on office group. So here you can see it's playing the audio group 
on all the different devices. So it's playing on the Chromecast, this smart display over there, and then the Google Home Max over here. So that works great with audio, but again, this does not work with video on the TV and audio on a different speaker. This is only for an audio group, so playing music on multiple Google Home speakers and Chromecasts all at the same time. And then the last few settings in here is ambient mode. So if I wanna come in and change ambient mode to go to Google Photos, so then I can come in here and adjust to personal photos that I have uploaded to my Google Photos library. And then here you can adjust the weather, time, device info, and all of that other information right through the Google Home application. Next, there's a setting to let others cast media, so you can turn that on and off. And then here you have an option for personalized results, so you can turn that off. And last here we have group delay correction. So if you are playing audio on a group and it's a little slower than the rest, you can come in here and adjust it so that they line up properly. So those are all the settings that you can use here in the Google Home app for the new Chromecast. Now, not only can you use your phone to cast and control your Chromecast, but you can also use a Google Home speaker. So if you have just a regular Nest Mini, or here I have the Nest Hub or a Nest Hub Max, you are able to control the speaker. Is so that up or link smart? No. So as how you do that is all you need to do is ask Google to play something on whatever TV it is, and you could go in and set that as the default TV to make it really easy. Play The Office from Netflix on Office TV. Here's The Office on Netflix on Office TV. So there you go, it loaded right up, and it is going to start playing. Pause Office TV. Play Tech with Brett from YouTube. Okay, playing Tech with Brett from YouTube on Office TV. And there you can see it just sends everything over to the TV and I can use my voice to totally control it. And then you also have some controls here on the screen where I can pause, I can skip and play and do all of that. It's really neat that you can now use a Google Home speaker to fully control your Chromecast. With other Android TVs in the past, I've had so many problems trying able to control the TV, it's just never worked. Now the final test is to see if I can turn off the TV. Turn off the office TV. All right, turning office TV off. All right, everything is working really great. And here you can see it even lets you have some other controls. So let's try and turn the office TV back on. And there I was able to even turn it on here from the Nest display. So here I also have the cast option. So here I could stop playing what's playing over there. Here I have the full controls. So let's say I wanted to stop or pause or skip forward. I am able to do all of that on a Nest display as well. So let's go ahead and stop right there. And then it just takes you back to the homepage of YouTube. Now the one thing is you don't have the TV control if you have it set up where this is controlling your TV with the volume and the mute button. So now let me show you how you can fix that. To adjust it so you can use the app, assistant, or your smart display to control the volume, head into the settings by holding down home, and then you can go to settings, and then you're gonna go down to remotes and accessories, and then down at the bottom you have the set up remote buttons. And then if you come over here, you have the option for volume control. So here you can set auto or you can have it be the Samsung TV and then let's choose Chromecast volume. And now you can see at the bottom, you do have the volume control coming from the Chromecast. So now if I say, hey Google, turn the volume down on Office TV to one, and there it turned down the volume. So it really just depends on if you want to use your TV volume or if you wanna be able to use Google Home, um, how you have that set up. There are definitely some benefits of using one over the other, but I think I like having the TV volume where I always have control no matter what device I'm trying to adjust the volume on. So under the setup remote buttons, I was having a few issues here, but I realized you can actually add other devices. So if I select add device, here I have a TV, but I also have a AV receiver. So I come down here and I can go through and add the Onkyo receiver that I have. So it's gonna go through and make sure that the volume control works. 
that the power works and that the input on the receiver works. Now, once I have done that, going back here, you can see I have my Samsung TV and my Onkyo receiver. And then if I go down here, it's showing what is controlling what on my Chromecast remote. So here, my volume control is now by my Onkyo receiver. If I want to adjust that, I could come over here and change to the Chromecast volume or the receiver or the TV or whatever. So here I have the power button. So you could have it be auto. You can specify the TV, the Chromecast, the Samsung TV or the receiver. And then lastly, we have the input button. So for the input button, I never want it to use the receiver. I want it to use the Samsung TV. So now our remote is going to work properly. So when I change the volume, it is now only changing it on the receiver. And then when I push power, it is powering off the TV. And then when I push input, it is then scrolling through the inputs that I have on my TV. And that is how you can use the Chromecast remote with your TV setup. Now every TV setup is completely different, so yours may be a little different than this, but hopefully that helps you in getting it working properly for you. So far, everything has gone pretty great with the new Chromecast. Now earlier, we downloaded the new Google Duo application that's available on Google TV. And so now you can actually use the TV to make video calls. So I'm gonna show you how you can set that up. After setting up our Chromecast, the next thing we need to use Google Duo is a dongle. So here I have a USB-C to USB dongle, and it also has an option for power delivery. So this is going to allow me to continue to power the Chromecast while I use this. And then you also need to have a USB camera. So here I have a webcam from Logitech that we're going to try out. So I'm going to plug this into my dongle and then we're going to unplug the Chromecast, plug the power cable in here and then plug this into the Chromecast. And then we're going to test a Google Duo call. Oh no! So that did not work. The power coming from the Chromecast cable is not enough to power the hub and the Chromecast. So I ended up finding another power brick that I had that was high powered enough to be able to power both of them. Now that we have the Chromecast turned back on, let's go ahead and open Google Duo and make our call. So here in Google Duo, it's asking for permission to access our contacts. It's asking for permission to take videos and pictures. And here it's asking for the ability to record Duo calls and that's a Duo feature. All right, so we are now in. Here you can see my contacts over on the side and there you can see that my camera is working. So now all we need to do is make a call so we can go down and find whoever we wanna to talk to in our contacts. So it looks like calling by voice doesn't work, but if we scroll up, it will show your recent contacts. And here we can make a call. Hey, how's it going? Hi, how are you? Good, can you hear me? Just fine? I can. Can so you I, hear me? I can. Can you rotate your phone horizontal so we can see your full screen? Oh, okay. Perfect. Here we go. So how's the uh, okay. house renovation going? Uh, really good. Let me kind of show you what we've been doing here. Uh, we've got uh, our window casings are done and we finished our floor. And now we're trying to decide on which color. <laughs> That's going to be the hardest part, I think. That is always oh, the hardest part. I got even a couple doors in, too. Hey, that is looking so. awesome. Thanks. How's my sound quality? Good. I, you sound like you're in a room. Okay. I think it's, using, really good. it's using the mic right on the remote to be able to oh. make the call. I think I found it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I can't turn to that one. Oh, okay, well, I just have to learn how to use my phone. There you go. Hey, you're uh, floating in space, though. It seems like you're uh, pretty tech savvy. <laughs> so are you seeing this on your TV? Yeah, this is on the TV. And I'm in the corner. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, now I'm full screen and you're in the corner. And then okay. I can mute. And when I mute, you can't hear me. All right. Can I move you around? Yeah, I could move you around if I want. This is fun. Okay. Thanks for trying this out. You bet. 
Okay, have a good day. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you have a Santa Claus on here. <laughs> they should. <laughs> okay. See you later. Bye. Bye. Well, that feature is pretty amazing if you can get it to work like that. So you do need a few more devices to be able to make that Google Duo call, but I think that's a feature that my kids are going to absolutely love, being able to contact grandma and grandpa a lot more. Wow. That was a ton of info. So hopefully that helps answer the question on whether you should upgrade from your old Chromecast or not. I would highly recommend that you upgrade unless all you want to do is uh, use your phone as a remote and play your Google photo pictures on the TV and original Chromecast does work great for that. But if you want the ability to have instant access to everything with a remote with excellent voice control and control everything from one device, I would highly recommend going with the Chromecast with Google TV. Now there are a few things that I think could be improved. I would like to see more support from app developers just trying Crossy Roads today. It didn't work because the app isn't able to take input from this remote. Uh, one other thing I would like to see is the Google Nest app be updated so that I can actually view all of my cameras at once. It won't even let me log into the Nest app. You can only see your Nest cameras with Google Assistant. So hopefully that is fixed over time. And it would be really cool, Google, if I was able to see who is at my door when somebody presses my Nest Hello doorbell. A little pop-up right here just for a few seconds of who's at the door would be a really cool feature. So if you have any further questions about the Chromecast with Google TV, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you wanna pick up this device, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. And as I make more videos about Google TV, I'll leave those over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. I can do this. Oh. <laughs>